Today's episode of the Outline Podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering a 30-day free trial and one free audiobook to the listeners of this show. You can redeem this by going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash outline pod, or you can simply click the link in the show notes. All right, let's start the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Outline with Kevin Dwayne. Yo, 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 this is Kevin Dwayne, and this is the Outline Podcast, your weekly discussion of all things entertainment, LGBT culture, and a piece of encouragement for everyone. Hope you guys are having an amazing week. I have a great show up ahead. Later on, I have the co-host and fellow photographer of the What About Your Friends podcast, Frankie Rivera. We're going to be talking about boundaries and limits, how to set them and keep people at bay because listen we all know that we let people in and get comfortable they start pushing our boundaries so we talk about that a little bit and it's a really 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 great conversation so i can't wait for you guys to hear that before just wanted to check in and just see how everyone was doing with your week this last weekend was very very um bittersweet for me um it had like some ups but also it had like a really really low down so i'll start with that first i just want to uh send condolences out to the family of officer antoine tony um officer antoine tony was actually a friend of mine i met him 12 years ago when we were like 18 and 20 i was older one and um knew him in la and uh we we remained cool all that time and then he actually moved to georgia and ended up patrolling becoming an officer and patrolling and living in the same county as me so he was always patrolling in the area well unfortunately days after he celebrated his 30th birthday he was uh gunned down um when he went out to check us um a suspicious car and it (sighs) my heart really sunk when i read it it just, it, it blows my mind. Like losing people is, is always tough. And, but it's just when it hits close to home like that. And one thing about it is I have a few friends who are um, cops and who um, work in law enforcement. And that's always been a fear um, of mine when, you know, they tell me, you know, that's their passion and what they want to go into. I always think about these things. And so it was just odd because on Saturday when it happened, um, another cop friend of mine posted on his page and he didn't even know Antoine he just posted like oh this is happening in the Atlanta area and I just had this gut feeling and I went and googled it and saw his name that he had been shot and killed and I just it was wow like it just it blew my mind especially knowing him he was such a kind-hearted guy like I'm not saying that just to say it like he was literally a sweet guy like he'd do anything for anyone he wanted to help people and he was very very passionate about bridging the gap between community and law enforcement and so it's one of those cases where a good person was truly lost and yeah so that was the the low part of the weekend it was just it's unbelievable you know it's, it's mad unbelievable especially when people are close in age and young and it just it just doesn't feel good so um condolences to his family and all his friends and all the people who lost a really great dude so i just want to say that um on the other hand um some other things happened um i mean not as exciting um considering what happened but you know it was still things to talk about nonetheless um i went to a a silent disco and it was my second time going to one but i have to say if you've never been to a silent disco you should go 
Like it's so much fun. I think it's a great social experiment. I think silent discos are good for people who are for the most part introverted, but you know, don't mind being out in public and wanting to be a part of something. It's really, really cool because with them, if you're not familiar, what it is is you go to a club or a venue because there's there's a spot out here. Uh, I'm sorry, a team out here called Urban Fet. Urban, I, may, I, I might be saying it wrong. It's F-E-T-E-S. Let me know if I'm saying it wrong, but I think it's called Urban Fets or something like that. Anywho, they throw silent parties all over Atlanta. So this one was actually at a club called Mix. So what it is, is you you sign up, you you get there and they give you a pair of headphones. They take your ID. So they want to make sure, you know, you, you bring your headphones back. So, yeah, but anywho, they give you a pair of headphones and on the headphones, they're attached to um, three stations. So there's three DJs there in the club and it changes color on every station. So you can know which DJ is playing what you can also see what other people are listening to. So it's super, super cool. So you're you're there and you're dancing. So say I'm on the blue station and it's playing Little Kim Crush on you. I'm vibing. Somebody else could have on the uh, the blue station and we start vibing together. Complete stranger. You're just vibing because you're listening to the same song. So it's like a bonding moment. And if you're over that song, you change to the next station. That's probably playing like Prince when doves cry and you jamming out to that. And the other one's probably playing too short, you know, shake that monkey or some shit like that. And that's literally like some of the songs they played over the weekend. And it was just, it's super fun. Uh, Me, Stacy and Mike, my friends went and we had a really good time. We were done by like midnight though. Like we, we, we got there, we, we went out around nine and then we went to um, Midtown Moon, which used to be Burkhart's before that whole racist thing happened and they closed it and they reopened it as Midtown Moon. It's the same bar. They didn't change anything but the name and the um, ownership, but the bar is still the same. It's got a big ass half moon hanging in there, but everything else still flows the same. So we went there, had some drinks. Um, and shout out to the, um, listener of the show. I believe his name was Terrence. Uh, Terrence spotted me out and came and spoke. So thank you so much. It's always interesting. Like, even though I know people listen to the show, it's still really cool when people come up to me and let me know that they enjoy the show. So thank you, Terrence. I appreciate that. You were really kind and, um, unassuming and it was awesome. So thank you so much. So I ran to him and then we went to down the street, not just down the street, they're in the same complex. We went to mix for and they were there for like it started at 10 so we're there like a good two hours and 15 minutes and that was more than enough time to have a couple drinks get sweaty and be over it and then after that took my ass home and then on sunday um as I, it was so last minute i ended up going to the so so deaf 25th anniversary tour so on saturday morning a friend of mine posted that he was going and was like oh who else is going And in his post, it had the Ticketmaster link there. So I just clicked it just for the hell of it. I wasn't initially interested in going. I just figured like, okay, that's cool that they're having this, but I didn't plan on going to it. It was just like, oh, that's dope. Who cares? You know, but it wasn't a big deal. But then I was going through it and I found like a floor seat for $100. Now, if you've been to shows, you know that floor seats don't typically are never for are never $100. So I was like, you know what? Let me take my ass to the show. So I bought a ticket and I went and the show was dope as fuck. Like the show was amazing. Like there were literally all of So So Deaf was there except for Criss Cross. And as you guys know, one of them has passed on and the other one, I'm not sure where he is, the other Chris, but um, everyone was there. Like you had Jermaine Dupri, you had the brat, you had Bow Wow, and I'll get back to him in a minute. You had Escape. Jagged Edge, Anthony Hamilton. Yes, he was on So So Deaf for his first couple albums. People don't know that for some reason. You had them franchise boys. Monica was there because, you know, Monica goes everywhere. She is not like Monica will be everywhere. Uh, Bone Crusher, Young Bloods, Omarion came out, Jacquees came out, uh, Ludacris came out. There were so many people. Uh, fucking uh, the. Uh, Jay Quan of Tipsy Fame, he came out like it was it was a three hour show with nothing but hits. Like I made a playlist that you can listen to on Apple Music. 
name, so so deaf, cultural currency tour that you can find under my name if you follow me that has most of the songs and it's about 48 songs on that playlist. And I don't think that was even all the songs they did. I only did the highlights and it was a three hour show and it was actually really, really, really amazing. Like Escape, Escape brings it. I like Escape a lot. I like when they tour. I didn't get to see them the first go around, but I'm happy I got to see them in this kind of climate because it was a, a variety of other people. The Brat is still dope as fuck. Like it was a good ass show. And then here comes Bow Wow. So me and Bow Wow sh share the same birthday, except I was born in 1986 and he was born in 1987. I do not see the similarities in us. I just don't. I just don't. Maybe it's a straight gay thing. I don't know. But that dude is a fucking diva. And I just, I can't, he was a prima donna that night. And it's just... I don't know if it's a childhood star who falls from grace type situation. But he is just a fucking fool, if you ask me. Like, just period. So, a good hour and a half of the show went by. And I thought we were Bow Wow free. I even texted my friend Brandon, who was, oddly enough, sitting in the row in front of me. We got our tickets at different times. But he actually ended up being in the same section in front of me. And I thought that was so cool. So I texted him and being like, oh, I guess Bowel isn't showing up because the way they did the show was everyone saying everyone who was in the show sang one song a piece to kind of introduce themselves. And then they moved into corresponding sets. And so after I saw Escape a couple times and Jagged Edge a couple times, and Anthony Hamilton a couple times, I was like, OK, so I guess Bow Wow couldn't get it together to be here. But oh, no, because he's Bow Wow, he had to have his own interest. So it wasn't until the mid part of the show where they were going through the rap, they got to them franchise boys and they got to the, oh, I think they like me. Um which Bow Wow's featured. And then he came out on top of the stage, super, super hype. And it was funny because the crowd was hype at first. And I was like, okay, so Atlanta still got love for Bow Wow. So that's dope. So I was like, okay, cool. Shocked the hell out of me. But, 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 when it was just him on that stage, motherfuckers sat the entire fuck down. They started going to get drinks. They started going to the restroom. They started buying food. Like people were just weren't here for him in that way. And it was funny because he kept, he was just, he was having a huge ego moment the whole time. So he's talking about, oh, I had to remind you motherfuckers of who I am and my impact and my sales. And he was just going on and on and on. Then he bought out Omarion and he's just like, yo, Omarion, I flew you all the way out here from LA. And I'm like, you just had the point of that you flew him out here or did he fly himself out here just to help you out? Like, it was a lot. Like, it was a lot. And so people only reacted to Bow Wow when he bought out people. So when he bought out Jacquees, people were like, oh, shit, because Jacquees is like the hottest thing right now. And then Jacquees ended up singing Trip, which I'm sure that probably has this legal ramifications. So there's this whole drama going on with LMA and Jacquees where Jacquees took, covered her song and he also tried to monetize it. And send it to radio with the video. So, 10 Summers sent a fucking cease and desist letter and said he couldn't perform it anymore. Naturally, because that's business. And so there's all this drama on it and people think it's LMA's fault and all this shit. And it's just really, really stupid. So, Bow Wow, so I guess to bring drama to his performance, was like, oh, well, you know, you should go ahead and just sing this song. So, Jacquees ended up singing Trippin' and everybody, you know, went up for it. And, you know, that was that. And then once he left the stage, they sat their asses back down. Bow Wow set was just long for no reason, honestly. It was just like, no one cares, man. So you bought Amarion out. Amarion, they sang Girlfriend, Let Me Hold You. And Amarion did his um his his big kit from the lap from like three years ago with Janae and Chris Brown on it. And he also did Bump Bump Bump. Um he had a B2K shirt on. I thought that was very interesting. Like I, that was very interesting because he's so anti B2K. But he did bump bump bump. And that was the end of Bow Wow set. Thank God. Um, but other than that, the show was dope. Just three hours of hits. It was absolutely amazing. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And then, um, yeah, one more thing I want to point out before um, we move into the interview with Frankie. Um, oh, T.I. and Tiny's show, Friends and Family Hustle. 
It came on on Monday on VH1, and I'm digging it. First of all, though they have a very problematic relationship, is their relationship to have. I've always enjoyed their show because I think their kids are funny. I, I it always had a very I always loved their fi- family dynamic, so I was excited to see the show come back. But this season is called Friends Friends and Family Hustle, so they've added Monica. Toya Carter, I don't think it's her last name anymore because she's not married to Lil Wayne anymore, but you know, Toya. And they also added LaToya Luckett to the show as well with her husband and um, uh, father of her child. And um, I really, really enjoyed it. First of all, I love Monica on television, period. I just love Monica. Like Monica is just one of those people that you just, I just, she's, she's Bougetto. And they talk about that on the show. Like she's hood, but she's also very classy. And like, it's just fun watching her with her kids. Her kids are hilarious. And then, um, I've missed Zonique and, um, crazy ass Ray Janae Carter on the screen. Cause they were on growing up hip hop, but naturally they will be on VH1 now. So they're back on there. And it was actually a really fun watch. They even tackled TI's uh, infidelity head on and in a very, um, a very interesting way. And I don't know. I look forward to the rest of the season. It's, it's a really fun watch. Latoya Luckett is hilarious. Her husband is fine and hilarious. And yeah, I, I really, really like it. So if you haven't checked it out, check it out and let me know your thoughts on the show. But I really, really enjoyed it. And that's that. So we're going to take a quick break and be right back with Frankie Rivera. All right. Welcome back to the Outline Podcast. I have a very special guest on the show today. It is none other than photographer and co-host of What About Your Friends podcast, Frankie Rivera. Thank you for joining today. Thank you so much for having me on, Kevin. This is truly an honor. I'm super excited. Like, I, I, I'm i glad that I could have you on the show. I know it was a long time coming. Um, you mentioned interest a while ago, and uh, it was just a matter of getting you on the schedule and getting it going. But I'm glad that we are finally here, and I'm excited to have you on. So let's talk about you for a bit. So let's start with the photography piece. We have that in common. How long have you been doing photography? Uh, at least I want to say about two, three years. Like I've always done it, but I never took it seriously until about two or three years ago. Um, I just started taking pictures with my friends and then I, you know, started thinking of different concepts, but then eventually I wanted to take it a step further and actually try to start telling stories. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's kind of like if anyone, you know, follows me on my photography Instagram, which is underscore box guy, quick little plug. Um, you guys will see, you know, my style of photography and how it's, you know, changed over the past maybe two or three years. Um, so it, it all just beca- it all really began when I was like maybe 14. I just would walk around my neighborhood and take pictures of like the sunsets or the parks that were around. And, um, you know, it was just something I really enjoyed, but I never took seriously until about two or three years ago. It happens like that sometimes. Sometimes you just got to do it as a, a hobby and, and just enjoy it. And all of a sudden you're like, you kind of get pushed into it that's how I felt I felt like I was pushed into doing photography professionally like it just kind of happened and I think that's the beautiful the beautiful part of having something that you're passionate about um so, right um and I've seen your work I love it and I saw you posted recently because we're friends on everything <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, I saw you post recently that you said you're gonna start naming your photos again oh no what had happened was I used to always name them but now um it's it's hard to say. Laziness is is a factor. So what I you know if, you, if anyone goes on my photography Instagram, you'll see that almost every photo has a title. Um, not everything has a caption because I'm not the best with those. Um, but lately, I just you know I decided to only title the photos that I'm going to be um, displaying in like an art show because right now I'm working on a second project um, and I decided to just give those titles just for more dramatic effect. Nice, nice, nice. That's that's cool. I love them. Um, now, what uh, what does box guy mean? Oh man. Okay, let me make this. Let me give you the Spark Notes version because box guy <laughs> is something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, so before box guy happened, I had you know different Instagram names, and you know you try to get you know as creative as you can with these kind of things, but you also want to be distinct and you want to make sure that people are able to find you. Um, and uh. 
during you know my process of practicing photography and really trying to get into it i um this was at a time when i lived with my co-host charnel shout out to charnel um i we lived in an apartment and there was a christmas tree that i had um that we had and there was a box underneath and it was just a silver little box i um never really saw any use for it but i just kept it in my room and one day I was bored as hell and I decided to put the box on my head and I was like, this looks cool. Let me see how this looks. You know, let me t take a picture of it. And then instantly I saw like a character. I was like, this guy, this looks like somebody. This looks like I can tell a story. And nothing ever really happened until maybe about two years, no, a lot. Let me see, two or three years later, um, I started, you know, taking pictures with my friends and they, I started bringing the box with me and they were like, oh, you can do something with this. And at the time, I didn't really believe them. I was like, oh, maybe, you know, it's, it's not a priority. But then I started going through shit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I decided to just channel every emotion and all my, you know, all my energy into creating a story. Um, and that's pretty much what you see with Box Guy. Box Guy, um, you know, another long story short, is basically just somebody who um, was really, really innocent, really pure. And he ended up finding somebody that gave him a sense of... Um, like a sense of placement or, you know, like a, like a feeling of, uh, of belonging, if you will. And, um, and he kind of, you know, he gets really, really excited about it, but then that person ends up going away and, uh, he kind of goes through the motions and, you know, that's, that's pretty much what the story of box guy is about. And then after I, um, after I presented it and, and had an art show last year, I decided to just give myself that photography name. That is actually a very beautiful story. And I didn't even expect it to even be so elaborate. I think that's awesome. Like, that's super cool. <laughs> but it's also, I see it, you know how when people get production companies and they have these names, you're like, where did that name come from? I totally see Box Guy being like a production, like later on the show. And then you have this great story to tell with it. And so yes, that's really right. cool, like Box Guy Productions. I see that being a thing. And the fact that there's a whole story um of like acceptance and stuff there that's super like that's super damn cool so kudos thank you so much that. like i like that a lot <laughs> awesome awesome okay so let's talk about what about your friends podcast all right this is it's time for your elevator speech if you just <laughs> if my listeners are your elevator tell them about your show in the next two minutes okay so I am a co-host of a lovely little podcast called What About Your Friends? It's me and my co-host, Charnel. If you guys, I'm pretty sure everybody knows who Charnel is if they listen. Um, he started this podcast uh, almost two years ago. He wanted to, at first he wanted to start a YouTube channel and talk about, you know, social, political, personal, you know, pop culture, everything. Especially, you know, coming from a perspective of, you know, a queer man of color. Um but he decided to just go with, you know, a podcast because, you know, doing a YouTube channel, you have to be a little bit more um, aware of lighting and how you look all the time. And that puts pressure on you. Amen. So I get it, um, which is why I haven't done it yet. But um, so he asked me to be a part of it. And um, I just jumped at the opportunity. I said, you know, we can make this a priority. We can, you know, I'm down to talk about certain things and I'm down to learn, you know, in the process. You know, there's things that we talked about in the very beginning that I may have a different perspective on now. And I've, you know, like I said, I've learned a lot during that process. And we actually just had our very first live episode, which is our hundredth episode. Um, so you guys can check that out on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher. I love um, the single ladies dance, by the way. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's been a long time coming and I'm super grateful that we've, um, we've been, accepted and embraced by you know the podcast community and we've met so many different people and we've had a bunch of people on our show um so yeah so that's pretty much it you guys like i said check it out on a uh, itunes soundcloud stitcher we're working on getting on spotify and google play it just hasn't happened yet oh well spotify just opened up uh i got an email they actually just opened up their podcast uh app so make sure you apply with them again like soon uh, um, like, gotcha, gotcha. yeah in the last couple of weeks i got an email from spotify saying oh we're accepting new podcasts so yeah it might be the time to try now i think they're they finally opened it up so it's not so um 
closed off because it was hell getting mine on there too <laughs> i was just like right. Jesus. i feel like you know at the very big well a couple months ago and i when we tried i think it was like well you have to have like a you know you have to have a pop in podcast you have to have like this many you know listeners in order to be on spotify well here's the thing it's almost like a it's, it's like a networking thing i would no shade to spotify don't remove my podcast but here's the thing <laughs> um it's kind of like the club that has the line outside the door and you get inside and ain't that popping so yeah. i'm on spotify but when i do my analytics spotify is actually less than apple less than soundcloud less than everything else so i'm just like okay so i mean that's cute i'm happy to be here but when it comes <laughs> down to like meat and potatoes like apple podcast still takes the brunt and i have other mm. things that like iheart radio everything else follows follows it spotify is probably of the lesser but i think it's about being a part of that that group i guess Right, right. So I guess I don't know, but that's just keeping it real, I guess. But um, that's awesome. Love it, love it, love it. You guys have a very good chemistry. So are you guys like really, really good friends. You said he was a roommate. Yes. Okay. So um, <laughs> another part of history. Um, so when I was sixteen, um, Charnel was my first boyfriend. Oh, love it. <laughs> and it was a very quick and dramatic relationship and we talk about it um we talk about it all the time but we really talked about it during our live show which was pretty fun um you know we ended up breaking up and then a couple months went by we became buddies again um we ended up living together not right away you know some time had went on you know enough time to heal and um we lived together for maybe about two years. This was before the podcast. This was before anything. Uh, this was before Box Guy and all this other stuff. And um, yeah, no. So that's pretty much you know our our relationship. And we've always had um, we've always had deep conversations about you know political, social stuff. And you know we've learned a lot from each other um, because we have we both have different um, upbringings, different backgrounds. But um, you know the thing that kind of brought us together was the fact that we felt the same way about a lot of um, you know a lot of the stuff that was happening around us. Wow, that's that's absolutely beautiful, honestly. And um, I mean, that's a part of like just being gay, child. Like, I for a moment, like for the longest time, a lot of my friends were people that I had been with before, and we're like, oh, we probably shouldn't have fucked. We probably should have just been friends because that that's why God sent you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like you just missed the mark. Like you were sent to my life, but I want some ass too, though. So, <laughs> but for for the longest time, like one of my um, I always joke, not so much now. Right now, um, in my friend circle, um, one of my closest friends, Charles, he and I started out dating when we were 18, but that was 14 years ago. So it's kind of like, if anyone's pressed about that, then that's their problem. Like, it was literally like a two month, you know, like how it goes, like two months, and then you fall out, then you become friends. And it, it, it happens that way sometimes. And then there's one other, um, one other friend of mine that I dated for like six months that, yeah, it didn't work out. We didn't talk for like two years and then we became really, really good friends. So I completely get it. <laughs> like it's one of those things where you have to navigate it. And I definitely navigate it better now. I can definitely separate people who are going to be friends versus who I'm trying to like be intimate with. So comes right. with the territory. It's, it's definitely it's definitely hard to figure out when you're younger because, mm -hmm. you know, you think, OK, I meet somebody and, you know, they seem cool. We, we vibe and, you know, maybe we should be together. And, you know, life is, you know, then it's going to be all sunsets and gummy bears after. And then it's then it's not. Can we talk about it, man? When I was <laughs> 18, all I wanted to was just to meet the one guy in the club that I was going to take out of the club. We were going to be in a relationship for like a year or two. Then we're going to live together. We're going to we're going to get married. We're going to have a child. I tell you, yeah. a, a dream, <laughs> a dream deferred. <laughs> okay. Oh man, we, that, that just it opens up the like the door for so many conversations because I remember being that you know that kid and I'm still kind of that kid you know I'm just a lot has happened so I go I'm just I just move with caution now yeah same here I had to like get to a place where I had to admit to myself that deep down inside though I talk a lot of shit and though I don't take my foot off of these niggas necks I am still a hopeless romantic deep down inside so even when I'm being callous and nonchalant there is a part of me that is still that 18 year old who wants it to work out with one person Right. And yeah, I, I'm the I'm the same way. Yeah, I had to admit it to myself, but I think we just as we go through 
um, living as gay men, you just, you adjust and you start navigating in a way that protects you. But it's important that you don't become a part of what you hate, though. Right. And so I don't want to become like this, this bitter being that pushes away love either, because that's not it either. I just operate differently i'm very no nonsense and i'm not going to play the game to achieve the the ultimate goal so it's real it's real out here right (laughs) and and depending and depending on who you know you discuss these issues with they can really make you feel like you know you may have like too high of a standard or you know you're not doing enough and that's the hardest part is to really you know have these kind of conversations with the right people Mm -hmm. you know because it's like i said it's easy to just talk to people, um, you know, about the stuff that you're going through. But if they're coming from a different place and they're, you know, depending on what, you know, if what their sexuality is, how old they are, you know, they can really kind of make you feel like, you know, maybe it is you. And sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's a balanced effort. Like, um, no one's perfect. You know, we all know that everybody has their shit. And it's a matter of figuring out what, what shit you're able to deal with and what shit they're able to deal with. You know, everybody's going right. to have their thing. It's a matter of finding the right amount of fucked up that works for you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's real though. It's absolutely real. But then like, also, like one thing people always ask me, I actually had a uh, a little, I guess I wouldn't call it a date, but like a little com- a little chat with someone. <laughs> and he was asking me what I was looking for um, in a potential partner. And I was just like, honestly, <sighs> self-awareness is important. You got to know what you are putting out into the world. You got to right. know that you aren't always a victim. You have to know that you are accountable for just as much because there's so many people who operate under this idea that they are invincible and life is just happening to them and they can't see their own flaws. You have to be able to see your own shit. Um, That's number one. Two, respect, like respect, just respect me. I respect you. You respect me like reciprocate and don't just don't, don't play any games. And then we, we went to like deeper levels of that, but everything else was like very surface level. You know what I mean? It wasn't, I'm not asking for much. I'm not asking for you to be six, three with a six pack and a Mercedes. And I don't care about that shit. Like it's certain tenets of, and behaviors that I look for. And I don't think those are high standards, you know? So. Right. No, I agree. And that's, I, I, I think you kind of, you have to, you really have to go through, you know, not to say a few people, but you have to learn, you know, what your priorities are because, you know, when you're when you're younger, when you're 16, you're like, okay, it'd be nice to have a guy that has a job and a car and, you know, that's like kind of popular but not too popular. You know, you have all these things in your mind. Mm-hmm. And then when you get older, you know, that changes drastically. Like, I don't give a damn what car you drive as long as I don't have to pick you up every day. You know e- what I mean? Ebo shy, Edamaha, <laughs> Robo Kashi. Listen. Listen, I don't care what you have and don't have, but understand this. You just need to be responsible for your own transportation. Right. You should not become a burden to me. Now, that is not the same thing as us being together already and you lose something. Different story. Right. If you lose something, I'm not going to be like, up, it's over. No, I'll work with you. But coming into it, you just got to be able to get to me. Because let me tell you, I don't know how it is where you are, but here there's a lot of I can't host, I can't drive people out here. And I'm like, so you want me to bring my black ass to your house? (laughs) No, not your house, to your mama, grandma, godmama, whatever, whoever's house. Pick your ass up, bring you to my home fuck you and then bring you back no that's just it's a lot of work it's a lot of work (laughs) that is like a premium package and that's when you have to start thinking of rates and maybe (laughs) like i can can i at least sit on your face because y'all be playing like i just it's a lot it's a lot yeah no the guys that well, I, well, lately, not lately, but like the people that I've been involved with, it's more of like a, I can't come see you right now because I'm with my girlfriend who's not really my girlfriend. You know, a lot of guys from where I live is are on the DL mm. and that's, you know, and it's really affected me. That's why it's hard for me to date. Yeah. 
it's 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 a tough one i attract them too but i recently i don't know i'm rebuking the spirit so you have to at, at some point that shit gets old like when like i said there's so much it's so different when you're younger you're like oh my god we're being secretive we're hiding it's you know it's dramatic but now you're like i don't have time to be your fucking secret yeah and that's actually a really good segue we talk about setting limits and boundaries um let's get into it that's actually really 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 good segue so um that's a perfect example dealing with uh with uh i just had uh daniel driffin on the show last week and we were talking about hiv and aids and i mentioned uh dl people and he was just saying like how he doesn't really care for the nomenclature of saying that and so i'm trying to watch using that word too because he had a good point about how you know we're all on these journeys but when dealing with certain men who prefer to be discreet and have these different situations happening um what happens is you end up being this plan b all the time like you end up like you're it's like your your time means nothing to these people it's always kind of like oh i'm gonna be here at eight but anything can happen where they're not gonna come and now you're screwed over and stuff like that until you get to a place you're until you get to a place you're like i'm not gonna put up with this in fact i'm good i'm cool on you i'm gonna cut you off so um that's a great example of limits and boundaries so when i say boundaries what comes to mind to you uh, okay, so if we're talking about um, dating or relationships, for me, I think the first thing that I think about is respect. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's respect for me, for the people that I surround myself with, the people that I call family, you know, unless it's a truly unless it's truly necessary. You know, because there's times where, you know, some of your friends may not like the person that you're dating. And, you know, that ha- that's going to happen regardless. And those, you know, sometimes you have to just address those privately. Um, but if I'm talking to you about a situation, you know, that I'm going through with my sister and you start calling her, a, you know, low life bitch or whatever, like that says a lot about you. And it says that you don't really, you know, you're kind of quick to jump the gun. So what are you going to do if we get into an argument? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh my God, like that, I'm actually triggered by that (laughs) because, (laughs) well, because there are a lot of people out there who are like that. Like they feel like in that moment they're batting for you, right? but they're also showing themselves and you're like, wait a minute, if you are this quick to insult someone or, or do something in this way, then yeah, when we get into it, that means I'm next. Right. And And, that's, it's it's one of those things where you kind of, I think people get blinded by because you're caught up in love and all this other stuff Mm -hmm. and you don't really notice the behavior until you know until it's happening to you Mm -hmm. when that dick hay starts to fade you'd be like oh wait a minute (laughs) because dick hay gets you it gets you man you need like (laughs) you'd be like wait (laughs) you know it's around the six the six seven month mark is when it starts to kind of clear out you're like you know what i don't like the way you chew right (laughs) one of your nostrils is uneven (laughs) <laughs> you just yeah. start noticing all the flaws all of a sudden they've been there the whole time but all of a sudden right? you know you really <laughs> laugh really fucking loud <laughs> and you talk too much during the movie <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start there we'll start with dating then so let's talk about setting limits and boundaries in dating that's a good place so how does this look for you? So let's say you are talking to, no, I hate talking. You're dating someone. You guys have been dating for a couple months. What okay. are some, I'm trying to think, I want to place this so it's not like you grasping for straws. I want to make it really, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, so I just want to talk about some of the limits you will have, kind of like this. Like, I won't, like, for instance, my, I'm not co-signing for shit for anybody. Like, we legit have to be married. That's a limit and a boundary for me. So that's what I kind of mean. Like, it's like one of those things like like finances and stuff like that. Like, if we live together, we can certainly discuss finances for sure because we're paying bills together. We're figuring things out. But as far as me going and signing contracts and we're not actually married or something like that, I'm not doing that. So that's a boundary for me. I may let you borrow $20. Sure. I may even give you $20. Sure. But... When it comes to an entitlement of my money, my pen, my pen to my ATM card, that's a no. You know, stuff like that. Setting limits like that. Do you have things like that you can think of when you're in relationships or dating? Well, see, I was just going to kind of bounce off of what you just said. Um, it's a little bit more of a gen- like a general um, boundary, like, but it, it applies to so many people that are in my life. Like, 
you know, just because I may have a certain title to you or, you know, we have so many years of friendship or whatever, um, that doesn't mean that you're entitled to my resources. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like people get that confused sometimes, especially with relationships that they think, uh, you know, OK, well, he makes this much money. I probably don't make as much. So, you know, he should be able to put down a down payment on my new car like that. That's I don't operate like that. And I've never been around people that operated like that. But I've seen it so many times. And I'm like, this doesn't seem like this doesn't seem right. It just seems like um it seems like an argument waiting to happen because, you know, a couple months down the road when you guys are arguing and you want to go leave in your car and he's going to be like, oh, no, uh, where the fuck do you think you're going? That's my car. I put the down payment on it. Right. And I- so little things like that, it, like it's kind of scary because then you really see like, you know, what triggers people and what really motivates people to, um you know, to show their ass. Yeah, I've uh, I remember I had a guy. Uh, <laughs> my best friend's gonna crack up when she hears this. I had a guy go in my wallet and get money out, and it was funny because it was like it was like it was it was like ten bucks, but it was just the the principle of like, did you really go in my wallet? It was a situation right. where like he was going to the store or something like that, and he's like, I'm I'm going to go to the store real quick, and I checked my wallet. I was like, wait a minute, like. You took and I asked him. I said, you took money. He's like, yeah, I took money out of your wallet to get the stuff. And I was just all like, but you didn't ask me. Like you said, you were going to the store. You didn't ask me. Like did I? Like it was just a whole thing. And he found nothing wrong with it all because we were fucking. And I was just like, no, I have a problem with that. Like I really do. Yeah. Like you legit just would like what? <laughs> like. <laughs> That brings me to one of your famous quotes is like, who raised y'all? Who raised y'all? <laughs> Man, like, oh my God. And the audacity. Like, I just, I don't know. But then also another thing, a big one for me, a big boundary for me is privacy. Now, we live in a culture where we have this idea of like, if we together, I should be able to go through your phone. I should be able to do this, 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 that, and the other. I just don't rock with that. And it's not because I'm not to be trusted. It's not because I'm going to cheat. It's not because of any of that shit. I just feel like I shouldn't lose my privacy just because I'm fucking you. And you shouldn't lose your privacy because there's still certain things that you shouldn't be privy to. For example, I have conversations with my friends about their personal things. I just don't feel like my partner needs to be in on those conversations if they are confided between me and my friends you know what i mean um there's also levels of just like if i write a journal if i have any things like that i just have an issue with people feeling like they're entitled to my innermost feelings that are things that i don't want to express to the world meaning anyone so that's a boundary for me hmm that's interesting i haven't been in enough relationships or not you know they haven't been long enough for me for me to really um go through that whole let me see your phone phase although charnel will tell you a funny story of me finding a photo on his flip phone back in the day yes flip phone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes this was back in the day so um but yeah no like for me i don't have that kind of time like if I'm, you know, if I'm in a relationship and I'm with you, if I happen to just be on your phone for whatever reason, not because I'm snooping, but just because I'm like, let's say you need help with an app or something stupid and I need to show you how to do it, you know, I don't I don't feel the need to be like, all right, let me just, you know, exit out of this and go uh go digging. Right. Um because you might end up digging and you might end up finding something that may be, you know, a little bit triggering to you, but it's probably not a big deal. Um, and sometimes things are. Sometimes things are. Absolutely. Everything is case by case because I'm getting older and I'm like, if you're going to cheat on me, fucking cheat on me. Just don't fucking lie to me because then when I find out and then I, you know, address the situation and you feel like you're going to lie to me, then you're insulting my te- intelligence. Yeah, that's a word right there for sure. And I like that you said you said something. You said it may be a big deal to you, but it's really not. It may appear that way. And that, I think that happens a lot too, as well, right. especially with the, I mean, especially being like in social media and stuff like that, there's always situations where um, flirting goes a little bit too far or right. someone says something that you, you guys have, you've had this joke forever and you, you two understand this joke, but if someone else came in, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? What does this mean? Blah, blah. It's like, uh, yeah that's just a joke like we're not acting on this it's not happening and like i feel you on that i personally come from the belief that anything done in the dark is going to come to the light anyway 
I like right. it's, you're gonna find out without snooping because when you snoop, you find that just it just is what it is. Anytime you go looking for something, your mindset is already on the ideal of distrust. I don't care what anybody says. Right. If you feel like you need to go through somebody's stuff, you already don't trust them. Keep it a buck. I if agree. you I if agree. your mind is already there, it's like what for what for what? Um, and it's here's the thing. I will totally show someone my phone, but don't feel entitled to it. Right. It's like, sure. Can I, if we're joking, playing or whatever, sure, go through it. Go through my pictures. I'll be like, just letting you know now, it's going to be a lot of dicks and asses, and I'm not deleting any of them because I'm with you. So just get over <laughs> yourself. Like, just, just understand, you don't get to clean the collection out just because you're here right now. Sorry. <laughs> I know you want to believe you're just like the only person I ever seen in life, but that's not how this works. We both was out here thought before we met each other. Get over it. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, it's like, okay, cool. Cool. You can see it, but don't feel entitled to it. And I feel people have this weird entitlement to people's privacy. And that is a strong no for me. Because if I if if I am being loyal to you and I am being trustworthy and I am giving you no reason not to trust me outside of not showing you my phone, then we should be good. But so many people hop in these relationships thinking like, no. If you don't let me see your phone, that means you cheating and I can't trust you. And I'm like, that is a really bad false equivalency. And y'all got to stop this shit. But it's the culture we live in. It is the like every reality show talks about phones. Oh, I want to see that phone. I want to see them DMs. I want to see what these bitches are saying to you. And I'm just like, this is a lot. <laughs> this is, it's, 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 it's almost too much ado about nothing as well. And I know me, when I date people, people tend to like, we tend to be together a lot. It's one of those things like, when would I have time to cheat on you if you're always here? Like, <laughs> like and we're always fucking. Like, when? Like, when? 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 So I don't know. That's that's another um, boundary for sure. Is privacy. I will gladly. I have no problem letting people in. I have no problem being vulnerable. I have no problem showing people things. Just don't feel entitled to it. Don't feel. Just don't over. I just feel like it's, there's certain boundaries that we shouldn't lose. I mean, even growing up, I had journals and stuff. My mom, well, my mom wasn't the type who would be in my room rummaging through stuff either, because she also respected that there's some things that he needs for himself as a part of being individual and human. I think. Um, I don't know, but I know there's people. Pe- <laughs> so many people. So many people I know disagree with me for sure. Like people really feel like, no, if you're in a relationship, there should be nothing hidden i understand the idea that nothing should be hidden that pertains to your partner anything that's putting right. them in danger or putting them at a disadvantage or anything that's disloyal to them absolutely not however there are some things that they don't have to be privy to it you're just you're just making them privy to it just because you feel like that's the thing to do and i just i don't know it's a it's a hard divide there and maybe you know maybe that's why i'm single i don't know but uh, <laughs> i just can't do it no i i mean i i think you have you definitely have some valid points when it comes to that um because i i feel like the whole let me see your phone whenever i want mentality is a bit childish and um but it's something that people are so used to. And, you know, like like I said before, if you're around certain people that, you know, put certain things in your head, like, oh, girl, you got to check his phone once a week. What are you doing? You know, it's uh, you can kind of you can kind of get lost in it. And you're like, oh, maybe I should be checking his phone a week. You know, he said he went to the store, you know, an hour ago, but he he, he still isn't home yet. And we live two minutes away from the store. Um, so little things like that. And then you start getting paranoid and you start thinking like, you know, that extra half hour he was, he was gone. You know, it could have been traffic. It could have been, you know, him taking the scenic route, whatever you're thinking. He went to go, you know, hit it and quit it. And at that point, break up with him, sis. Cause like you already done, like just break up. What's the point? <laughs> but they can't. But they can't. But they can't because he put down the thousand dollar payment on the car. Oh my god! Like yeah, uh, 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 uh. and see that ownership piece is just so tough because that's when you start getting to the trackers and then the um, and another one is social media. Social media is yes. tough because I um this is before. I probably, yeah, this is before you and I even uh, started, like, 
conversing on like social media and stuff like that but i was in a long-term relationship three years ago and it was very public like it was very public like we were friends we posted pictures the whole thing you know the whole thing and it was fine like i had no problem with it but of course naturally like people say when you have a public relationship that means the fallout is going to be public too and so right. naturally when we broke up people were in my dms like i don't see you posting no more you know that messy shit i don't see you post <laughs> i don't see you posting no more everything all right wait up you know that where your man where, right and because it, but it's like this weird kind of like they wanted you to fail anyway so they they seek joy in it and i personally yeah. said i don't really want to go through that again i honestly just don't want to go through the idea of having to explain myself to people when they were like, it was just me and him. So it's kind of like, I don't really owe you an explanation. And people have this weird entitlement once again, that just cause you post online that they need to be privy to all the whereabouts. No, no, no. You get to see what I show you. And that's right. it. <laughs> You're not privy to all the ins and outs. You see what the fuck I show you. And that's just that. But people have this whole thing. Like, no, when you break up, we want to know. I don't care what you want to know. You can guess all you want and that's your business, but that's my business. And so I personally was like, okay, I learned my lesson. I don't want to go through this again. So I would rather have a private relationship. Now, there are a lot of people out there who feel like that is a problem. There are people like, oh, hell no. If he don't post you, that means he got a bunch of hoes, that he don't want them to know that he in a relationship with him. If he don't put you on his snap, there's people who really believe that if it's not on social media, it's not a real relationship. And that's a problem. Right. But I have an issue with that because I'm like, that's not why I don't want to do it. I just don't want to have to go through what I went through already with the last one. But people, yeah, but some people, it's, uh, it's it's tough. It's very tough, and I've I haven't been through that situation specifically, at least not yet. Um, because, like I said, everybody was kind of on the DL when I was messing with them. Um, so everyone, you know, every one of their friends just thought they were single and straight. So obviously, that was an issue for me. Um, you know, down the road, but now I'm just a little bit more. I don't know. I guess I don't I don't feel the need to ever be somebody's like trophy or anything like that. Um, it'd be nice, you know, every once in a while if we posted a picture together, but it doesn't have to be a thing where every week you're posting a picture of me in this dramatic, you know, exaggerated post like, oh, my God, you're the light to my darkness and my love burns for you with the white hot intensity of a thousand yes, suns. God. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> But I think we're so you people are so used to that, like the people that expect you, you know, to explain everything that's been happening in your life. They're so used to, you know, like the cycle and the pattern of um, of events that happens during a breakup or, you know, when things get rocky, because, you know, you'll see it like there are people that will have an argument or maybe they'll maybe they broke up for like two days or something and they instantly go to social media and just start acting a fool. Mm -hmm. Passive aggressive as fuck. And Right. And people are so used to that, that that they feed into it and they're like, OK, so now I know somebody's going through it. Let me let me try to get at get at them while they're hot. Well, it's also entertainment for them. And that's that's my that's right. my issue with it. I have no problem sharing my love for something. It was never it's, there's a fine line between just expressing an absolute joy with someone and showing off. My relationship was right. never about showing off. It was just me being genuinely happy with him. And posting it, right? But on the same on the same token, I believe in curation. I'm not going to post our bad days for what? For what? Why would I put that into the world so you guys can add to the bullshit? No, absolutely right. not. And so it's 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 a weird divide. Like I like you said, I have no problem. Like I love expressing myself. I love stuff like that, showing things like that. I just don't want to be in that type of space. Honestly, I would prefer that me and my partner didn't even follow each other on social media. And here's why we wouldn't have shit to talk about when we were together. I don't hmm. really care for the going through the profile all day and saying, Oh, who's this? Or, Oh, you was here. Oh, you went here. I just, I would rather not like, I would rather not follow my partner. If they want to follow me, I don't really give a damn. But I would rather right. not follow them because I just don't want all that insight all day, all night. Like, I would rather when we're together, we can actually have a conversation. You can tell me about how your day went. You can tell me about how shit happens. 
I don't want that much access all day because I also think it also wears us thin. It makes us tired of one another quickly because it's too much. That's that's right. No, I agree. So it's like, you can follow me, sure, if you want to. I just don't need to follow you and I don't want you to think that is me not claiming you. And it's it's hard to explain that to people. It's so hard. Like, I don't really want to be your Facebook friends because I don't really want to see your passive aggressive ass statements all day. And one thing on top of that is a lot of people pose online and that bothers me. I don't want to be with somebody and see them post when I know that's not really who they are. That would drive me crazy. Mm. So it's like, I would just rather not. Uh, can we just not? And we just have each, we have each other's numbers and phone numbers. We can FaceTime. We can talk. We can do all this shit all day. We can be with one another, but I don't need this level of access to you online. I just don't. I just don't. That's, that's very interesting. And I never, ever thought of it that way because, you know, from my past relationships or, you know, past people that I've dealt with, I, you know, always followed them. And, you know, when you get, when stuff gets, starts to get rocky, um, then you, you know, start unfollowing or you start, you know, unfollowing their friends and that's when it gets messy or whatever. And then you're, you know, even though you unfollow them, you're checking their post every week. You know, this was, you know, during a dramatic time, but um, everyone's so used to that. And I remember, Um, not too long ago, having conversations with like my cousins or my sisters and they're like, oh, do you still follow homeboy? Check his page. I want to see what he wrote. And it's like, don't, you shouldn't have this kind of time. Go out and find somebody else, you know? And I guess a lot of it has to do with me getting older and really understanding what like the priorities are, you know, because it, you know, I'm at a point where I'm like, if people want to act a fool, they're going to act a fool. Me checking, checking your profile or giving you another view or whatever, isn't going to change anything. It's just going to build your ego. And I'll be damned if, um, you know, 27 and i'm still freaking building up egos only to be let down listen i ain't gotta block who i don't follow okay uh <laughs> like you know um uh like my my damn ex like he, i used to hate it like he would be upset with me and wouldn't tell me but go on facebook and be passive aggressive i'm like nigga i'm in the next room <laughs> like come in here and tell me but when I ask you what's wrong, you say nothing. But you go to Facebook talking about, oh, like it's like this whole post about bathrooms. Are you saying I need to clean my bathroom? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, come to me. I think you know what it is. I think they're looking for that sense of validation mm. that you don't always get during arguments. Right. And, um, you know, and sometimes people can get it when they get that one mm-hmm. like or if they get that one comment. And, I, uh, and it's it's sad. And I, can't, I can't compete with that. I cannot compete with that like at all so i'm like can we just not so that that that's it i'm trying to think if there are any other um i mean there's there's i'm sure there's several other boundaries but i also want to move on to other levels as well so i want to move to let's move to family um because i think family is a very 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 important one um there was uh this guy that i knew and he was so loyal to his family because, you know, we're told, like, that's your family. But I recognized over time that they weren't reciprocating the same sacrifices that he was. Like, you know, he'd be working all the time and doing all this stuff to support and do all this shit, but he wasn't getting it in return. And I would always kind of be perplexed. And also because I know my limits and I don't overstep my bounds. I didn't say anything to him about it because people get very sensitive when you talk about their family. Okay. I've right, learned you right. just <laughs> keep your fucking mouth shut because that's how you get cussed out. <laughs> but I right, would watch right. and be like, why is he overexerting himself? And none of his family, sisters, brothers, cousins, all the people who he is killing himself for, they just take, take, take and don't give. But he felt like he he was indebted to them. And I'm just like, so how do you set limits with family? Oh, man. See, I think it kind of goes into what I was saying earlier about like, you know, being entitled to people's resources just because of their title. Um, You know, and I've had situations with family members that just felt entitled to like my money because I, you know, don't have kids and I don't have all these other responsibilities that that, that they have or so they think. So basically, um, you know, if they ask you for $20 um, and let's say you just don't want to give it to them or you don't have it on your own, they want to kind of drag you through the mud and be like, well, why don't you have $20? You, you make this much and you don't have any kids and this, this and that. I'm like, well, because I live my own fucking life. And Sally Mae is real. <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, I'm just because I don't, in fact, people don't realize the government actually punishes single people. 
<laughs> like right. I'm taxed way more because I'm not married with a child. So I actually right. have a lot. I don't get dividends every tax time for kids. So kiss <laughs> all of my ass for that. Money is a big one with family. Money is a big one. Um, that was a big issue for me. Not a big issue, but it was always this kind of weird thing of like, if someone in your family is struggling, you're like, okay, I want to help you, but I'm not going to ignore my own livelihood to help you. It's like, I had to learn to help within reason. So I can put some money on your rent, but I'm going to pay my rent in full. I'm not going to sacrifice my rent to pay your rent in full. You know what I mean? I'm still giving to you, but I'm not taking from me to where I'm fucking myself over. And I feel like some people don't see that. They just say, oh no, I have to be sacrificial. I have to be completely sacrificial to my family. And I'm like, I get it, but don't be dumb about it. <laughs> like, you gotta, yeah. like, don't fuck yourself over, especially if they're not going to dig you out of the hole that you're putting yourself in to help them out. Right. And that's what I've seen a lot. I, um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I used to live in somewhat of like a bachelor pad, (laughs) um, with my best friend and a few guys from our high school, um, who were all straight. And I was the only fucking gay one. And, um, he, uh, his dad was the owner of the house and he told him he could have roommates and stuff in order to pay the bills. And, you know, for the first couple of months it was fine. And then people started not paying their bills. It, you know, it started getting crazy. And this was something that I, now I realize I should have just did this when I was like 19 or 20, not 25. Um, and he, there was a point where there was, you know, a couple rooms empty and his relatives from Jamaica wanted to come and spend the summer up here and live rent free. And I was not having that. I was very, I was very upset about it, and we've had many conversations about it. Um, but it didn't destroy our friendship, thank God. But I noticed, I noticed that you know his family started treating him and his father kind of like the, you know, like they were the, the they were they were kind of uh, what's the word? Crutch. I guess you could say leech. Yeah, like a crutch, or they were oh. like leeching off of this stuff. And I just, it really showed because. I would see him and he would, you know, he'd come upstairs, he'd go to his room and he'd be like, well, I didn't eat today because I had to pay for you know, this one to go to, um, to this place to apply for a job or this, this and that. And I'm like, so you didn't eat today because you had to do all this stuff for somebody who doesn't live here, doesn't pay any bills. is probably not even going to be here in the next five months. Mm-hmm. I said, what are you doing? That, but when- that's exactly it. That is the pinnacle of what I, that is it. Like, what, what do you get in return? And I'm not right. saying that I know that there is a, especially people who are very, very religious, there's mm-hmm. this idea that they're saving up coins for heaven or something or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. Oh, no. You can laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think people feel like I have to give, 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 and it's just going to give me spinner rims on my car in heaven. And, <laughs> but I look at it from a no. This I need to know that. I'm doing this for you because if I am in need, you'll do it for me. I'm sorry. There has to be value there. And there's so many people who, like you said, they will not eat to help somebody else who's already benefiting in the first place. Like you said, you're already living rent free. Okay. You're already doing all this stuff, but now I'm going out of my pocket to help you get on, but I'm sacrificing my own livelihood. And I'm like, no, you're going to have to set a better limit. (laughs) Like you're going to have to set a better Yeah. (laughs) And so many times I think, you know, depending on, you know, what kind of family you come from and the upbringing and just like the the morals that they instill in you when you're younger, like it really does affect the way you, um, you know, the way you treat others and the way you treat yourself. And me personally, I got to a point where I was like, you know, not to get too much into my personal life, but like my mother would always try to tell me to, you know, oh, try to get your brother a job at where you work, this, this and that. And I'm like, listen, my brother has his own deep, dark issues. And I don't need to bring that into my place of employment or whatever. I said, I need to be, I need to be the best that I can be, you know, and then maybe we can talk about, you know, referring people or something like that. But for it to be that close, um, to me, it's just too much of a risk. Especially if I know you ain't shit. Are you kidding me? (laughs) Like, oh my God. Okay. Great example. Um, Braxton, the Braxton family. That is the, 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 the best example I have. Like Tony Braxton, was shamed and guilted by her mother for years just for going solo. Like, L.A. Reid and Babyface didn't want 
all of them, they're like, listen, Tamar's 13 and you're in your 20s. How are we going to market this? How are we going right. to market a band that goes from 13 to 24? It doesn't work. We want yeah. you. And so Tony was like, okay, I'm going to go solo. And her mother shamed her, made her feel guilty, made it feel like it was the devil trying to separate the family. And she held this guilt of like, oh, I have to help my sisters. I have to help my sisters. And literally she's at a point now have you watched the last show where she's like i don't like my family it's because of like all the pressure they put on her to put on the other people and it's like but i'm out here grinding i'm out here doing all this stuff i'm out here doing it all you're doing is getting a meal ticket right and being walked through the door so it's like one of those things like you're not entitled to what I have like of course we all want to put people on I would love to put on my friends and family within reason but it's not like don't feel entitled to it and like you said it becomes like it's instilling you from like childhood so I'm sure like as Tony well I read her biography when she was growing up she said her parents were very religious and always instilled the idea of family and there's nothing wrong right. with that there's nothing wrong with saying family first there's nothing wrong with saying you know blood is thicker than water and all that shit that's great but make sure the actions match it because right. just no, because we're I in the agree. same bloodline doesn't mean you get to treat me any kind of way and that pushes me to the final point of family when it comes to sexuality I see so many gay men who aren't respected by their own fucking family, but yet they alter themselves to make their family comfortable and they deny parts of themselves and give so much of themselves, but their family won't do the same for them. See, okay. This is a little bit of a tough uh, topic to discuss um, only because when I was coming out, I was 15 and, um, I was more concerned about my friends and being accepted at school. And during during that time, me and my father had a falling out. So I wasn't concerned about his opinion at all. And um, I was I was ready to literally throw everything out the window when it came to family because I was like, I need to do this for myself. I can't be concerned if my uncles or my godfather or my aunts or whoever doesn't like or doesn't accept who I am. Like, I literally threw all that out the window. Um, but not not to say that I'm like hesitant, but, you know, because I haven't been dating like that. But if I were to be dating somebody and, you know, it started going well and, you know, I was more confident in it and it came down to bringing them around family members for holidays or, you know, or special events or anything like that, I'd be a little hesitant. And it's only, you know, it's only for this, like for them. Not for me, because I can handle my own when it comes to my family. I have no problem cursing out an aunt or uncle Listen, when it comes to that topic, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, because there's certain things that, you know, they tell you, you know, you have to respect all this time. But it's like, you know, listen, I've been called gay and weird and all these other names by my uncles. And that has not stopped me from, you know, from going off. Um, and you can you can use love as the excuse like no you know i love you this this and that it's like okay well you said what you said and you meant it right you weren't and you, and you said it to hurt me so that just makes you even more that just makes that just means you ain't shit you right know what I mean? trash and um right and when it comes down to that it's like i said i can handle my own but i'll be damned if i'm gonna you know have the person that i'm you know involved with or the person that i'm dating you know be subject to that and because then it's like you know how do you explain that? How do you, you know, how do you um, heal from that situation when the person you're dating, their family, you know, decides to say certain things like that to you or make you feel uncomfortable? And, yeah. you know, you know, we're all trying to find a fucking sense of home within each other. And sometimes, you know, th that it goes into other conversations. But sometimes, you know, when you feel like you have it and then something like that happens, it's like, damn, like, am I in this? You know, should I be in this situation? Is it right for me? Are these signs? You know, it just it can really mess with a person. Yeah. And I'll be damn like if I'm someone's partner and they want to take me to Thanksgiving or wherever and they want me to pretend to be their roommate or something. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I don't, I would just rather not go. And I had an episode about this, I want to say earlier this year where I'm like, just don't invite me. Like, right. if you invite me to somewhere and you're asking me to be someone else, I'd rather not go. Right. I'm not even flamboyant to begin with, first of all. <laughs> like, I'm literally just me. I may cuss a lot. I may talk about a lot of information, you know what I mean? But when it comes to right. like, it's like whatever. But like for you to say, oh, when we get here, just don't, not, I, I will stay home. 
I'll stay yeah. home. What's the point? I don't need, listen, I don't need macaroni and cheese and collard greens this year. It's cool. Like, I'll be all right, like at the house. I'll whip something up and watch um, the Christmas story all day on Marathon. Like, it's cool. Like, right. and, and uh, so many people literally become someone else just so they can say they have family and i just don't come i would rather not have family than put myself through that and that's just my personal view um i know that um i remember when i first moved to georgia because i don't have a lot of family in georgia like i have i I mean i have my cousin i have people here but someone's like well um if you know anybody make sure you know you keep in touch with them because you know it gets it gets real cold in georgia georgia what they mean is you know anything can happen to you and you should always have somebody to do but i don't live my life that way i live my life knowing that the universe has my back i everything that i've been through always worked out so if i fell on hard times i know that something will work out in the way that it needs to for me to be okay so i'm not going to keep connections to people who actually don't like me for the sake of a rainy day right that's foolish to me whereas some people feel like no this is my family it's my family but your family don't actually like you yeah and that's one of the hardest pills to swallow and i think you know i made a i don't know if you remember but i made a status about you know people that um you know that we call friends and family and their problematic behaviors and or their toxic behaviors and you know we kind of get blinded by you know by love or lust or whatever um or by the titles that they that they are to us um and that affects the way we you know the way we judge them or the way we we witness what's happening we just we turn a cheek to a lot of things and um i've had conversations like this with plenty of my friends that you know they're either their their direct parents or, you know, family members aren't treating them the right way, but they're always around them and they're always, you know, they're loyal to them. And I'm like, you can't get, you you lose, I feel like you lose a sense of like what's right and what's wrong sometimes when it comes to like loyalty. And I never want to put myself in a situation where, you know, I'm defending or I'm standing by somebody who is just dead wrong Mm -hmm. um, just because, just because of their title to me. Blind loyalty. Um, blind right i always think about it in cases of like molestation and rape Mm -hmm. i always Mm -hmm. think about that woman or that man who has a brother and sister who has touched their child and they would protect that brother or sister like they literally would choose they would choose their brother or sister over their child and it Mm -hmm. blows my mind it's like I, i can't send my brother to jail I can't send my, but your brother touched her offspring right? and caused them trauma. I just can't. I can't send my brother or sister to jail. And this is really the issue we have in the world in general is blind loyalty. So in spite of whatever you do wrong, I'm going to find some kind of way to make it right. And I'm like, "That's, that's not healthy. It isn't, but I think people are so used to that. And like I said, you know, we, they're so used to certain patterns and certain cycles. It's really hard to break away sometimes. And it's hard to be the one to, you know, to, to call shit out and, you know, to really stand up and live in your truth. Um, Not everyone's willing to do that. And sometimes they'll, they'll make certain sacrifices that they probably feel isn't right, but it, you know, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't pull, it doesn't top what's, you know, what's their situation with their brother or, you know, or who they're um, trying to cover up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's and wow. it's hard. It's really hard. Like, there's so many stories I've seen that people, you know, they blame their children or they'll blame society. They'll, they'll blame TV shows. Like you, you, you know what I'm talking yeah. about when I say these things mm-hmm. and, um, and they're just going all the, you know, they're going all types of ways to, to really deflect from the real issue. They gaslight the and, fuck out of you. Right. And they'll really make you feel like you're the issue. You did this. Like Mm -hmm. you are the reason why this happened to you. Mm -hmm. Are you are you sure he wasn't just hugging you? Are you sure? Like, right. Well, you know, you know, you do you do act a little crazy. Something like, oh, that will gaslight the fuck out of you. And it's it's, right. It's it's it's, fuck. It's tough. And so it's like one of those things setting like setting limits for, for me. 
I set hella limits. I used to be a pushover. And so it, it comes from experience. I wasn't always mm-hmm. this way, but I used to be a pushover. I used to, I just, I wanted the validation, the comfort of friends and family. And then I got to a point where I was like, nah, fuck all this. Like for what? And so right. I, I don't, I don't do blind loyalty. Like you said, wrong is wrong. And, yes, and, I... <laughs> yeah, and so if you, so if you disrespect me, if you do things like I, like, I don't just, my brother could fucking do something crazy as fuck. Just because he's my brother, I'm not going to be like, oh, I got your back. No, if you do something wrong, you do something wrong, man. And I had to really see that with just me being gay. Like, there's some people in my family that honestly drive me crazy because they love to be in my comments and all this shit. Oh, I support you. And oh, I love you. And blah, blah, blah. And as soon as they're mad at a man, what do they do? Call him a fag. Say, yep. say, you know, call him a pussy. Call, I'm just like, interesting. So that's an insult mm-hmm. to you. So right. how do you love me? And how do you support me? Like, you don't see the connection there, like, at all? They just kind of just shrug it off. I'm just like, okay. And I just, yeah, nah. <laughs> no, limits. Limits and boundaries. Dude, right. I did not expect this to be such a flowing conversation. There's so many different levels we can go to this, but I... It might have to be a part two. It may have to be a part two, but <laughs> I appreciate you being on the show. Let people know where they can find you, man. You guys can find me on Twitter at Frankie L. Rivera, Instagram Frankie.L.Rivera, photography Instagram underscore box guy, and Snapchat Frankie.Rivera. I almost fucked that up. <laughs> yes. I mean, and all this will be in the show notes because ain't nobody trying to type nothing in. So I'll put it in the show notes so you guys can just click and follow him. Make sure you guys listen to the What About Your Friends podcast as well. Um, it's a great show. And uh, yeah, make sure you are also subscribed to this show and sharing it with your friends and all that good stuff. And until then, I'll talk to you all next week. Peace out. Bye-bye.